Okay, so a little while ago I did a video on scraping Amazon reviews, but I wanted to revisit it and update it, uh, make it a bit more accessible and more robust and better. So I'm going to be using requests HTML for this, so make sure you pip install that and we'll get started. So I have my empty code editor here. What we're going to do first off is we're going to import what we need. So we're going to do uh, from requests HTML and we're going to import the HTML session that we need. Let's just make this one bigger. Hopefully that's going to be better to see. Let's move that down. So we are going to use a class for this and that's because we want to have the option to be able to import this in. Uh, to other projects it's going to become an object so i'm going to say that the class and we'll call this uh, reviews and we're going to then initialize this with our def double underscore in it which is basically going to give us some of the parameters that we need to start with some of the attributes so the first thing that we want to do is we want to say that self dot session is equal to uh, html session so this is the session object that we're going to be using continuously throughout whenever this class instance is called and that makes our requests much easier to manage and much nicer. So let's then carry on and do self.headers and these are going to be the user agent. So capital U and A like this and we're going to pass in a user agent here so that we get past that little tiny check that Amazon does. So I'm going to copy my user agent from over here there we go and just paste it in if you don't have a user agent or you need to nut or you need to get one just go to google and type in my user agent and you'll see the string will be presented to you you can just copy and paste it from there the next thing that we need is the url so we're going to have self.url is going to equal uh, we'll have our brackets here now i am going to use an f string for this because what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the asyn into our class so when we call this class instance we're going to give it an async which is the product identifier for amazon so what we're going to do is we're going to take that and then we can put that into the url that we're going to call so that we can easily have our class instance call whichever product that we're looking for so we're going to go ahead and grab the url again i've got this copied over here i'm just going to pull this over now right so what this is this is the product reviews and you can see this is where the asin is going to go so i just need to add that in here so we'll do self dot asin is equal to the asin that's provided and we're just going to use an f string in python to pass that in to the middle of the url and you can see this is the url i've got and i've got this page number at the end now this is how we're going to deal with the pagination we're basically just going to use python to give us the page number in here and that's how we're going to go through the page urls there are other ways you could do this you could do it by clicking on the button or sorry rather getting the url for the button and then following that but in this case because of the way the pagination works which i'll show you this is just the easiest for me to do so now we have our URL, we want to move on to working out how we're going to do the pagination. So I'm going to create the first actual uh, class method and we'll call this pagination. And we need this self keyword in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do r is equal to s.get and then we're going to give it the URL plus a string of the page. So we need to pass in our page variable into our function here. So what we're saying is that when we give this uh, pagination function a page it's going to put it at the end of the url which is down here which is going to be our page number and you need to make sure that you turn this into a string otherwise you'll have an error because you can't concatenate an integer and a string in python and this of course needs to be self.url and this needs to be self dot session because we want to use the session object that we are calling up here so these need to match through so you can see them there so to proceed here we need to go to the actual website itself i'll show you the um, pagination so all i did was go to a product on amazon scroll all the way to the bottom and there's this view more reviews button and that takes you to this page i've decided that i'm going to filter by most recent this is up to you i just feel like most recent probably gives you a better idea because you might not want to go through all of the reviews for certain projects for certain products because there's probably going to be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them so we're going to go for most recent and what we want to do is we want to scroll to the bottom and we're going to check out here's our next page button so if i hover over that you can see that it says here there's the next page 
and it says somewhere in that link is page number is equal to two. So what we want to do is we want to basically go through when we loop through we're going to use a 4x in range so we're going to use the range of one to whatever number we choose. What we're going to do is we want to go through until there are no more reviews on the page. The best way that I found to do that is if we cover over one of these review blocks here and then look for the top level kind of one here you can see we have this data hook review. Now if you were to go to the next page you would get more of these and more of these and more of these but if you go to one page too far you actually just don't get any of these divs returned. So what we can do is we can say in our code that if you don't find any of these any of these reviews then we can just say we want to break out of our loop. So I'm going to copy this and it's a data hook and it's a div. So what we're going to say here is if not r.html.find div div and the attribute which can we can use CSS selectors here so we can do data dash hook is equal to review. Was it review or reviews? It was indeed review. So if this doesn't exist we are going to return out of this function false. Else we're going to return this that we've just found. So what we're doing here is we're saying hey look if we don't find any review uh, divs here, any of these, any of this um, this element block here that's got that data in, return false. And we can actually then, when we call this function, we can say if it's false, we can break out of the loop. Otherwise, we're going to return the data, which we can then pass using our next method, our next function. We can pass it um, because we're going to be returning out of this pagination. There are obviously other ways to do this. I just found this was going to be that the nice and the neatest way to do so. So what we want to do now is we want to write our next method, which is going to be our pass function. We want self, and we also want to pass in the reviews, which we're going to return from this pagination function here. So let's go ahead and say that we're going to want a blank list to save all of our data in. And we're going to do then for review in reviews. Reviews. So in here is where we want to put the logic to pass the HTML. So we're going to get three bits of information. We're going to want to grab the sort of title part of the review. You can see here, this is where people kind of like put their, their main kind of thoughts. We'll grab the star rating that they've put in and we'll also grab the body of text. But what we'll do is we'll just chop it short. We'll just slice it and make it a certain amount of characters. And it's up to you how many you want to do for this. So if I go and hover over this title part here, we can see that we have this a tag with a data hook of review title. This makes it nice and easy for us. So if you look in this one, you can see that there is a class, but this was really long, horrible looking class. Whereas this attribute of data dash hook review title is really nice and simple. So I would definitely use the CSS selector to grab it using this. So let's go back to our code and we're going to say the title is equal to review dot HTML. No, review.find, sorry. And then it was an A tag and it was data dash hook like this. And that was equal to review title. We want to go and get the first is equal to true because request HTML will always return a list. We want the text object from that. Now we want to do ahead and get the rating. Uh, so let's go and find that on the page. Hover over the stars. We can see we have this I, let's move that over, of the data hook here, review star dash rating, and then there's a span underneath. So let's copy that, and it's an I tag. So we can do review dot find. There was an I tag. Again, the data hook is equal to this. And then we want to close that out, but we still want to select the span tag underneath. And then again, our first is equal to true dot text. I'm actually going to make this one smaller. It's easier to work there we go the next thing we want to do is the body so we can go again let's find that here and you can see there's the data hook review body nice and easy and then a span tag again this was a span originally so we can copy this paste this here and we'll just change this it was a span tag and it was review dash body was the selector and we still want this span here because this was um, the information the tag underneath that we want to get 
and we'll first is equal to true and dot text. Now what I'm going to do is because this is sort of like free text where people get to write, you can see that it's got these breaks and stuff in it. Um, I'm actually going to do a dot replace and we'll remove the backslash n which is the new line from these and we'll just do a dot strip on the end as well which is going to just tidy this sort of large body of text up a bit it's going to remove the new line so when we actually output this at the end it's just easier to process and read so now we've done that we want to construct a dictionary using this data um, you could obviously do this all in line but I'm just going to do our data is equal to here's our dictionary and we want the key of title to be equal to the value of title the key of rating rating and then the body is the body and I'm actually going to put in here I'm going to put my slicer and we're just going to do a hundred characters uh, you could do that up here but I'm just going to do it here for now what we want to do now is we want to actually do total dot append and the data tag here so what we're saying is we're going to loop through all of the reviews pull out this info save it into a dictionary and then append that dictionary to our total list so once that's done for each page we want to return the total list back out of the function so i think what we should do now is we should test this out and then fix any errors that i may have put in and because what i'm doing because this is going to be designed to be imported into other pieces or other projects i'm actually written my class in here i'm going to put in the if uh, double underscore name is equal to main and all this means is that this code that I put under here will only be run if we actually run this file directly so if you were to import this into another Python file it won't run this bit of code so I'm going to say that our AMZ is going to be the instance of our reviews and in here we want to put the ASIN you can see it's telling us that I'm just going to grab my ASIN from over here put that in there and then we can call our first function so amz.pagination and we're going to give it the first page and we need to store this into our reviews variable so whatever comes out of here we're going to store it print our pass of the reviews and we need to call this as amz.pass because this is our class function right let's find out what I did wrong and we'll run this and it works great so you can see that we've got all the reviews off this page um, I've somehow managed to add in an extra bracket around the title um, all right I see I left a comma in here I didn't need a comma there which was going to be causing us the issue because we're getting a tuple back there we go so now that that works we can see that we have this information back that we were expecting to see so let's work on the pagination now so if we go ahead and just print out instead of passing the data let's just print uh, reviews so you can see that we get all of these elements back so remember when I said that if you do this on a page that doesn't exist you just don't get these elements so let's go up to five and run it now you can see we get false back so that's our code working up here so it didn't find any of these elements so it's returning false so we can just build that into our loop to say hey if you find if you if the return of this function is false break out so we're going to construct our loop we're going to do uh, we need to have a variable actually to save everything in so let's do results and we'll do 4x in range we want one and let's just do up to five now because I know that for this product five returns false so we're going to say do this reviews is equal to and we'll give it the x we need our comma there so we're saying for x in range one to five so our x is going to be our page number then we want to work out what comes back from this so we can say if uh, reviews is not false so false was what we got back down here we're going to go ahead and do results dot append the pass of the reviews function there so this is going to call our passing function which is going to do what we just showed you up here and grab this information so when that happens so what happens if it does go false we want to do else and let's just have a print statement in here so print no more pages 
and we want to break because it's if we don't break we're just going to print that and we're not actually going to break out of this loop so we want to add in our break here so let's run this again now at the end we will print out the results and we should get all of the results back i didn't put a print statement in to go through the pages but there we go i believe this looks like all of them so let's go ahead and to a write something to save this data in so we're gonna have a new function a new method and we'll call this one save and we're gonna have self and also results because we want to give it the total results that we get so this variable that we've constructed here is going to go into this function so what i'm going to do is i'm going to save this as a json file um, quite often i'll do a csv but i think in this case especially what i'm planning to do with this json is going to be a better bet so we're going to do with open because you want to use a context manager and we're going to say that our uh, self.asyn is going to be the first part of the file name and then we're going to add that to dash uh, reviews.json so that's just con that's just constructing our file name i'm going to use w i'm going to do as f so all this is doing this is our context manager which means that the file that we're going to create will be automatically closed regardless of what happens it's going to take the asyn which we're going to pass in in the function in the top of the class here and it's going to concatenate that with the dash reviews.json to make the file name so our write file so now we can just do json.dumps and we'll give it the results and the file so all we need to do now is come to the top and get rid of those because I don't know why my code editor did that import json I'm also going to import uh, time as well just to give ourselves a little bit of breathing space in between each of these requests so we'll print here getting page let's move that up and put space in there x and we'll also just do time.sleep and we'll make it 0.3 for the moment so now we've done this we want to actually add in our save function so we can just do instead of printing the results we'll do save we need to call our amz which is our instance of our class dot save there it is and the results perfect okay that all looks good to me so i'm going to run this and we should end up with a nice json file at the end with all of that data in one two three four dumps okay i did that wrong it shouldn't be dump it should be shouldn't be dump s it should be dump um, dumping s would be for a string but we weren't doing that so let's delete this file nothing in it anyway so let's run this again complete here are all our reviews let's just format this file please format document let's move this out of the way and we can see that we have all of our reviews here all neatly structured and saved into a json format for us uh, from each page so that's gonna so that's it complete now you could put any asin in here but one thing a couple of things that i would probably add in uh, to this if we were going to make this a bit more robust and a bit more usable which i think i probably will do eventually is we want to add in some actual error error handling so if we miss a request or something goes wrong there we actually handle that and also some logging that logging is really important it's definitely worth adding into all of your uh, python files that python programs that you intend to run more than just a few times if you're interested in learning about logging i think you're going to enjoy this video right here